Well, a very warm welcome, unusually warm almost, um, to St. Winston's Church and a particular welcome to Bishop Libby, who's joining us to preside and preach today, and to her husband George. Um, it is great to have you here. Um, a couple of just little notices. I can see from here there is a significant quantity of cake at the back, which I'm not going to manage all by myself, so please do come and help with the cake consumption afterwards. Don't forget there is also the church barbecue um, this afternoon, um, and you'd be very, I'm sure you'd be very welcome to come to that. Um, we can sort something out if you haven't booked. Um, just have a word with, well, have, have a word with Liz after the service, who's currently waving. Thanks, Liz. Um, <clears throat> some bands of marriage which is always exciting so um, for uh, St Saviour's Foremark I published the bands of marriage between Gareth Edward Sean Coleman of St Werberg's Parish Derby and Hannah Elizabeth Pinckney of St Werberg's Derby this is for the first time of asking and I published the bands of marriage between Samuel John Weston of this parish and Rachel Elizabeth White, also of this parish. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why these couples may not marry, you are to declare it. Let's pray for them now. Lord God, we thank you for the gift and joy of marriage. We pray for those who are getting married in our churches in this benefice this summer. We pray that you would bless their day, their relationships and their lives together. Amen. Amen. So in your hymn books, we're going to sing number 175.
grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. And thank you for uh, the welcome that George and I have already received. We look forward to um, uh, helping you to eat the cake after the service um, and um, being able to have further conversation with you. Um, the liturgy for our service this morning is in the green booklet. Um, the sung parts of the service, in addition to the hymns, um, there are helpful little stickers in that, just in case there are other visitors like me. There are helpful <coughs> stickers in the service orders that say where bits will be sung, and that's on, a, um, on the separate white sheet so you can follow as we go through. Oh, as we have gathered for worship, recognizing the presence of Christ in one another, in the world around us, in the reading of the word, in the breaking of bread, after a moment of quiet, let's offer together prayer of preparation, section three on page one. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, to live in love and peace with all. We sit or kneel for our prayer of confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought, word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. Amen. God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing the Gloria. Glory be to God on high.
We collect together our praises and prayers. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin, have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from Romans, chapter 6, verse 1 to 11. Paul argues that if we have been baptised into Christ, then we should live our lives in him, dead to the old ways of sin, alive to the new way of Christ. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Our gradual hymn. Him is 516. Please stand to sing.
Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus summoned the twelve and sent them out with the following instruction. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. we pray that as we consider and explore your written word that you would make known to us Jesus your word made flesh and that we might be equipped for your kingdom amen do please be seated I wonder um, if either you can remember or um, you might know, um, who, who did you want to be? Who did you want to be like uh, when, when you were growing up? 
Can you remember anybody who you thought, I want to be like that? You're nodding, Stephen. Who was that? There we go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Anybody else willing to, to let me know? It might, might be a, somebody from a, a story or a film. It might be a, a sports person or somebody um, famous. It might be a member of the family. Who, would you, who, who, who did you think, I'd like to be, I want to be more like that person? I can't, I can't believe Stephen's the only person who had somebody who they thought, yeah, go on. Mrs. Bryant, my primary school teacher. Mrs. Bryars. Yeah, I expect lots of us have a Mrs. Bryars somewhere um, around us. A, um, uh, a teacher or somebody who was part of our formation, part of um, maybe a, um, a uniformed organisation or a sports club or or some kind of um, activity that we were involved in, where there was an adult who we thought, I'd like to be more like them. That's who I want to be like. In our Gospel reading this morning, uh, Jesus says um, to those uh, who, <laughs> who've chosen to follow him, um, those who have become his pupils, those who want to learn from him, who, who want to be more like him. Because it's not only when we're children, or at least I hope it's not only when we're children, um, that there are people around us, uh, people we actually know or people we admire from a distance or... Uh, people who are characters who are made up, but who we recognize something in them that we would want to aspire to or to emulate. Uh, those who had wanted to, to learn from Jesus, Jesus said to them, it is enough for a pupil to be like their teacher. It is enough. And what I want to reflect with you this morning is that in our Christian journey, that it is enough to want to be more like Jesus. I don't know if you noticed in in that gospel reading, the number of times Jesus says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be worried and afraid. Do not be afraid. Um, because it's a, it's a really sad situation when, when our following of Jesus is something that makes us afraid. That, that somehow we feel we're not enough. Um, that, that, that we can't do it, or that, or that we failed, or that we've let God down, or we've let one another down, or we've let ourselves down. That we're not enough. Now, actually, that's true. Oh, that's true, we're not enough. That's, that's the point. That's, that's the point of Jesus, we're not enough. That's why there is Jesus, because we can't do it ourselves. Uh, that's why um, uh, Paul, um, uh, in that letter to Romans that we just heard part of, just honestly goes on for pages and pages and in the Greek without any punctuation because it just goes on and on and on. Um, just trying to find the words to explain that, 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 that we're not enough, we can't do it by ourselves, that's why Jesus is needed, but it's okay. 
God knows that we can't do it on our own, and that's why God gave himself fully and wholly in Jesus. So it is enough. So following Jesus doesn't, mustn't feel like burden and failure. It can and perhaps should feel like being able to look at ourselves full face in the mirror and to recognize that we can't do it ourselves. We can't be without sin or deal with our sin by ourselves. We can't make ourselves by an act of will be perfect, be good enough. We can't all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it's okay because God's chosen for it to be enough. Jesus on the cross, his final words were, it is enough. It is finished. It's done. It's dealt with. And so he speaks to those who have chosen to be his pupils, to follow him, to, to look to him and say, I want, what I desire is to be like that. What I want is some of that. What I want is to be more Jesus. And Jesus says to those who had that yearning then and says to us who have that yearning today, that's enough. It is enough for the pupil to yearn to be like the teacher. You can't do the things that I need to do, says Jesus, but come and follow me, and that's enough. So don't be afraid. We can gather this morning, no matter how our week has been, no matter how we have been, what we've faced, what we're carrying, it's okay, we can come, wholly and completely, honestly as we are, and gather around Jesus' table. And remember that Jesus did enough. Jesus did it all. So that our yearning to be more Jesus is enough. And we can gather, and we can pray and praise, and listen, and speak, and receive, touch and taste the completeness of God's love for us. And not be afraid that we won't match up or we can't, we can't do it because it's enough that we want to. So for those of us who do want to, who yearn to be more Jesus, Has anybody got a watch on? Who can tell me what time it is? 10.03. Thank you. Perfect. <coughs> so 10.03. If you have a watch, just put an put a, put a, um, alarm on it for tomorrow morning, 10.03. If you've got a, a phone, put a reminder on. I don't know, don't know what you're doing. Put it on silent if you need to. I don't know what you'll be doing at 10.03 tomorrow morning. If not, just tie a knot in your hanky. Put it in your pocket so it reminds you. This time tomorrow, 10.03 tomorrow morning, do you know where you'll be? Do you know what you'll be doing? Let's have a think where, where, you'll, where, where you'll be and what you'll be doing at 10.03 tomorrow morning. Is anybody happy to tell me where you'll be? Yeah, where will you be? You'll be in the middle of an interview. Somebody else's interview, not your own. Yep. In the middle of an interview. Yeah, where will you be? 10.03, teaching English at 10.03 tomorrow morning. This time tomorrow, at 10.03, probably if you're in the middle of an English lesson or an interview, it probably matters that your phone or your watch doesn't make a noise. But, but it might just be able to, to silently vibrate. 
But wherever it is, what are you doing? 10.03 tomorrow morning. Just pause for the merest moment at that point and say, think to yourself, how can I be more Jesus? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, this time tomorrow, be more Jesus. Because that's where it matters. Our yearning to be to be like Jesus, to follow Jesus closely, to, to really walk in his footsteps. Where that matters is at 10.03 tomorrow morning. It's wonderful that we can come together and celebrate and, and enjoy and rejoice in that together at 10.03 on a Sunday morning in this glorious building. But where it matters is at this time tomorrow and tomorrow, and tomorrow. So how can you be more Jesus? 10.03 tomorrow morning. You think about what Jesus was like, who Jesus was, what Jesus did. How can you have a go at echoing some of that in an interview or an English lesson? in your work, or, or at home, or with your family, or, or with your friends at school. How can you be more Jesus in that moment? Jesus said, do not be afraid. It is enough for a pupil to want to be like their teacher. <coughs> Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, again in accordance with the scriptures. we sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. <coughs> the scene of the prayers today is authority. Uh, we welcome our Bishop Libby to our service this morning. 
And we pray for her as she leads the clergy and laity in this Diocese of Derby. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christians, we base our lives on the authority of the Bible. We pray that we may be diligent in our study of the Bible. We pray for our Bible study group. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill, especially for those known to us that are chronically sick, for those recovering from operations, for all who suffer from depression. In the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, we read that Jesus came with authority that even the unclean obeyed him. In other words, those who are mentally ill. <coughs> we pray that we may have faith in the healing power of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all in authority, for Parliament, for county councils, for district and parish councils. We pray for them as they often face difficult decisions, whether to keep green spaces or to provide more affordable housing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the churches in this benefice, for Mark, Newton, Solney, and Repton. We pray for the church wardens, for the parochial church councils. <coughs> As they face difficult decisions about the future, the future that is difficult because of shortage of clergy, as well as financial constraints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the five who died in the deep sea dive last week. We pray for their families. We also remember the many refugees who have drowned <coughs> recently in the English Channel and the Mediterranean Sea. Finally, we pray that the fragile world peace may not be threatened by the recent unrest in Russia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray that many more people may accept the authority of Jesus in their lives. And we ask God's blessing on our mission to all among whom we live. We pray that we may take up our cross and follow him. We say the prayer 
at the bottom of page 16. <clears throat> Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. by those for whom it's comfortable to stand as we share the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As offer one another in your usual way a sign of the peace.
Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he ate supper with his friends. Taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor which you have created for us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise.
page 12 of our service order. We sit or kneel to pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Do not presume to
Let us pray. O God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us thy glory as far as we can grasp it and shield us from knowing more than we can bear until we may look upon you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Prayer at the top of page 15. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We whom this cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Our final hymn is... Five nine one. Before I send you away in peace, um, 
might I ask your indulgence that I may have a photograph with you um, so that I can have that um, for, for my record and also um, with your permission to put on my Facebook page so that I can celebrate having been with you with anybody who chooses to look at, at the, Bishop of Dar um, the Bishop's Facebook page. Um, are you content that we have a photograph? Is that all right? If you need not to be on a photograph, and that may be the case, uh, you might want to just step behind a pillar. That's fine. I, I, some people don't want to or need not to be on photographs, and that's okay, but it'd be wonderful if we could do that. Um, if my husband, George, could make his... George is just going to come and find somewhere suitable to... Um, would you come... If, if you come up here, you go all the way... Okay, great. Let's see. Would you like to be on this photograph? Okay, you're okay. <laughs> Thank you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.